Hey there CNCers, Scott here from CNC Labs. Welcome back to the shop. We were thinking, what's a better way to pass some time in the summer than some giant yard games? Ah, I lost. We have created and designed all the files so we can share them with you guys so you can go and have Adder. If you want to go and experiment with Onshape, if you want to just download DXFs and change things around, if you want to just take the G code and run it, we're going to share those files with you all for free. We're going to upload those links in the description below. From there, we are going to basically just run you through the process. It's a pretty simple one. We're going to load all the files. We're going to cut everything out. We're going to sand it. We're going to assemble it. And then we're probably going to call in some hooligans to test it out. And, you know, we'll let the trash talk begin. Other than that, um, I think the only thing that you might notice that's going to be a little different between partially what you see and what you actually get for files, sorry. <laughs> uh, as we've worked through the process, we've noticed a couple of things that we wanted to change. So, you know, the slider might look a little different. The shelf might look a little different. Some very minor things. Rest assured that what you see and what you get, you guys are going to get the best of it. So we've worked out all the kinks. We've found all the flaws and we have updated the files. We've changed everything over and uh, you guys are going to get the best of this. So let's uh, not waste any more time. We're going to dive right into cutting the sucker out. Here we are in on shape. I just want to touch quickly on the variable thickness parameter. You can double click on it and change that parameter to whatever the thickness your actual plywood is. So if you're working with actual half inch, then you type in 0.5 IN and you get half an inch. If you're working in millimeters, just type in MM after that and whatever your thickness is, it will automatically adjust everything within the file to be your proper dimension. After you've set your thickness variable, then the next thing is to actually go and start exporting to DXF. So you just select any surface that will highlight bright orange. You'll right click and you'll export as DXF, DWG. You'll save it where you want, you'll name it, and then it'll be there for the next step, which is VCarve. Now we're in VCarve and it's pretty simple. We're going to go to the import vectors icon. You're going to go and find that file that you just saved out of Onshape. You're going to import it. After that, you are going to highlight everything that it imports and you are going to go down to the join open vectors icon. That basically is taking individual lines and making sure they're welded together so you don't end up with any errors later on in the process. I did this join open vectors um, icon selection for everything that I imported just to make sure that everything was joined together. Uh, so every single thing you see has already been joined together. And if you open up, say the DXF that I've saved or the VCarve file itself, it will already be joined. But if you're importing from Onshape, you'll need to do that yourself. Sheets are really cool if you haven't played with them. It's in the tab here over on the left. It's basically like a layer within a layer. So it allows you to have, sorry, a document within a layer. Uh, it allows you to have different work piece sizes within one document so you don't have to keep on opening and closing. Uh, from a file management standpoint, it's really nice for me as a guy who comes from like, a, you know, a 3D graphic design background because I'm allowed to, or I can have everything in one file and I can just switch between them. They can be a little tricky. Sometimes you'll have something selected and put it on the wrong one by accident. But if you go and mess around with them, you'll find out how powerful it is to have everything within one document and not have to, you know, monkey around with saving multiple files and keep on opening and closing. So my thinking behind the setup of these files and the sheets uh, was that most people probably have a 30 by 30 machine. So this four by eight sheet of plywood that we have is not gonna serve everybody you know, a really good purpose. So we designed the files around the 30 by 30 so that you can slice and dice your plywood up, which I do later in the video. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'll show a picture of how I cut it up in case you wanna follow that exactly. Uh, but that was the basic rationale behind it was I wanna make sure that it can fit on a 30 by 30 without any issues. And it does, good for me. Here and for all the sheets that I set up, I kept everything an inch from all of the borders of everything. I thought it was going to be enough to actually steer clear the clamps, which it kind of is, but I failed to think about my dust shoe. So as many things as I've carved, I still, you know, 
didn't go through my checklist quite properly and I ended up taking screws instead a bunch of times, which there's nothing wrong with screws. Um, you know, at the end of the day, as long as it holds your workpiece down, that's all that matters. Uh, we also can see here where this is what I was talking about, maximizing the piece of wood where I stuck some of the teeth inside the puck hole cutouts because wood's expensive, let's not waste. <laughs> For the pucks sheet, I decided to use the array copy icon, which is down here. It's you know pretty simple. You just have to monkey with it to make sure you get the right dimension or the right number in the right order, right rows, right columns, whatever they're called. Uh, but it's super handy if you have multiple things instead of trying to copy and paste them. You just hit that array button and you're off and running. For my tool paths. It was either an inside or an outside toolpath, uh, depending on what I was cutting out. Uh, I went with, uh, you know, a 0.14-ish depth, and I went about a feed rate of about 100 uh, inch per minute. I sped that up in G Sender if I felt it could handle it. There were some parts like the teeth where it got a little chippy because of the plywood. It wasn't the bit or the shape, it was the wood itself. So I paid attention to that. Some parts like the pucks, you were able to speed it up to like 240 even, quite honestly, and it was just ripping around them. Uh, other than that, what did I change? We went in and edited the passes. Uh, I set the last pass thickness to 0.04 inches. That basically says, hey, cut all these ones at this level or at this depth, and then cut this one just a you know, it's a little bit thinner, so when you're going around, it doesn't blow it out as much. Uh, what else did we do? Outside, uh, I added tabs to some of the things that I felt might need to be held in place, the teeth, uh, the pucks. Some people don't want to use tabs, some people do. I would rather my stuff stay in place and have to, you know, do some sanding even though it was a lot of pieces than have my stuff come jittering around and get chopped up by my road a bit. Uh, what else? We do, 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 do. We added a ramp to it of, you know, 0.4 inches, give or take. So that's just slowing the bit in so that it doesn't plunge right in and, you know, snap off your bit. It allows them to last a little bit longer. And I think those are the major settings. So if you want to use the VCAR file, knock yourself out if you can. And if you're not, then that's more or less the settings I used for carving everything. <laughs> So here I am slicing and dicing that four by eight sheet of plywood into smaller chunks for the 30 by 30. Like I said, here's the image showing what I cut it up into. I can probably even include that in the description below. It's not the end of the world, you can see it here, but it was basically, again, that rationale of it'll fit on a 30 by 30, everybody should be happy. <laughs> Finally, we get to cut something with the CNC. This is pretty much, it's a standard setup that I use for this whole project. I throw down spacers, I make sure it's square, I clamp or screw it down depending on, you know, how close it is. And again, this is where some of my plywood being bent was a bit of a pain because you'll see me go in there and drop in screws while it's going. I was being safe, don't worry. Um, but I could see that the plywood had a bit of a bow to it and I wanted to keep it as flat as I could because it was actually punching through and causing some of my pieces to pop out, which that's a pain in the butt. Nobody wants to waste wood. 
So once I have my work secured, squared, and ready to go, I make sure that I zero my X, Y, and Z. I used my auto zero touch plate here because quite honestly, it's square wood. It's really easy to use. Um, and then I ran it on the outline. I do this for pretty much every project just to make sure it's gonna go where I want it to. Even with the outline, I still didn't again consider my dust shoe. So I may or may not have had to go back in there and add some screws after the fact, but you know, we're always learning guys. It's not just you guys, it's me too. So this is sheet number two. Um, I found after running the first one without a dust shoe on, I thought it was gonna be really nice and let everybody see what was going on, but I couldn't deal with the mess. So I threw the dust shoe back on. This is where you'll see me scramble a little bit because I didn't factor my dust shoe on and it bumped into the clamps a couple of times. So I dropped some screws in, made sure my work was still secure, I was safe, and that was it for sheet two. Same process for the rest of them going forward. <laughs> So it was around here that I looked at my wood and said, why is there so much sawdust? And I realized that my shop vac had broken. Perfect. Because I don't have more work to do. So you'll notice going forward from here that there's a lot of sawdust happening. I think I actually even peeled the dust shoe off because I said, what's the point in having it on there if it's not getting sucked up? Now I have to go shopping. Finally, five sheets later, we have everything cut out. I bust out a random orbit sander. I break edges all the way around. I believe I was using 120 on this, but you know, use what you got. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you want it to be really flawless, you're probably not working with plywood. So sand all those edges, sand those tabs, make sure everything will fit together a lot easier than rigid, rough edges. Now these little Klingon parts in particular, I sanded the shoulders down just to make sure that when we sandwiched it between the two big Connect 4 kind of pieces that it wasn't going to be a pain because I had a feeling it was going to be a little tricky trying to get it all fitting together. So that's why I sanded these shoulders down a little extra. <laughs> Alrighty folks, here we are. We've got all of our big pieces cut out um, through the power of editing in this particular video. There's a lot of time lapses going on because nobody needs to watch me sand stuff for an hour. Couple of points before we get assembling. 
This guy, little rubber mallet, good motivator for when pieces don't quite fit together as nicely as you'd like. Some sandpaper, because you know there's going to be the odd piece that you just want to break the corner on, break the edge. And the other thing I found super handy was any places where there are pieces that slot together, you know, however you want to do it. Um, I broke those edges, I beveled those edges, and actually on these big Connect 4 chunks, I actually sanded these guys down, not heavily, but I gave them a good hard sand just to make sure that when I go to connect everything together, it slides together a little bit easier. Um, the beautiful part about all this is that we're giving you the on-shape file so you can go and modify this to whatever you want. We're going to give you the DXFs that I saved out of V-Carve so that you can take them and mess with them as you like. Or if you just want to get this thing done, we're giving you the G-code, plop it in, cut through it all, put it back together, and you're good to go. Having said that, there are a number of repetitive processes in this, such as, you know, slotting these guys together. So I'm going to show you how to do one or two, and then we're going to do some more time lapse because nobody wants to sit around listening to me babble at myself for an hour. Alrighty. I have a bin of what I'm calling the Klingons. These guys right there. Yep. And I have some more, another bin that's got some er, matey, some pirate teeth, these guys. These are pretty straightforward. We take a Klingon, we take a tooth, and we slide them together. Beauty, that's gonna lock it all in place. We have this piece right here that is as wide as one of our pucks so that when we are slotting them in, whoop, they all stay in place. And that's pretty much it. So, I found that the easiest process was putting all the Klingons in Put all the teeth on both sides, slide on your A-frames, slide on your puck collectors and your puck slider, and you should be off and running. So without any further ado, I am going to show you how to throw some of these guys in. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I have my pretty sides out, as pretty as plywood can be. That's a pretty side out. There we go. So, grab a Klingon. These rectangles that are all cut out. This will slide in. Oh, look at that, like butter. Now, part of the reason it slid in so nicely was like I showed you earlier, where'd my bin go? I sanded these shoulders right here and right here. And I gave this whole outside profile just a little bit of a break for this exact reason. It's a lot easier to have them just slide in nicely and then lock them in with the teeth than it is to fight with all of them. So that's why I did it this way. So I'm gonna run through. I am going to put all the Klingons in. I'm gonna slap the other side on. I'm gonna put all the teeth in. I'm gonna time-lapse that and then we'll come back for the A-frame and the rest of the construction. Here we go. Alrighty folks, how many are there? Two, four, six, there's 42 of these wicked Klingons all in place. Some of them may have popped out while you were going. Some of them might need a little more motivation to get in there. And so you, you know, give them a little tap of the hammer. Try not to snap them off, but that's why there's so many extras in the file. It's plywood. It's, uh, you know, not the sturdiest building product, but it serves a purpose. Um, something else that I did notice, I should have probably mentioned earlier was I don't know if you can see it, my plywood is bent like a half pipe. Um, so if you can find yourself some flat plywood, that's certainly gonna make it a little more enjoyable to put together. There are some uh, parts of this that are, were a little trickier for me because there was a bit of a curve going into a flat. So keep that in mind. The next step, and this one is, I'm not gonna lie, fairly tricky because now I gotta try and slide all these guys through. So this is just an exercise in patience. If uh, somebody else has a better way of doing it, then I'd be all ears, but uh, this is just kind of how she goes. So we're gonna slowly work these things in. 
And if we need to motivate it with a motivator, we'll motivate it with a motivator. And that's about the next step. So I'm gonna struggle with this for a little while and I will come back once these two pieces are together. Stick around. Well, all right, so I wasn't lying. That was not a whole lot of fun, but we got there. Now, the good news is they all lined up, except for that one. The bad news is there might be a couple of non-survivors there that I may have motivated a little too heavily with my mallet. So if you're gonna do it, you may wanna put a piece of wood, you know, find a scrap. Preferably not one of your pieces that you're going to use, but it probably is smarter to do that. Oh man, I wish I would have thought of that. Yeah, that works a lot better. <laughs> At the end of the day, folks, get it lined up, get all your pieces through, and now we move on to the next step, which is grabbing a bucket full of pirate teeth. Like I showed you earlier, you grab a tooth, you slide it in, and with any amount of luck, you haven't split too much of anything. Let's try this one instead. There we go. Tooth in place. This thing's pretty sturdy. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Uh, we are just going to put teeth on one side, flip it, put teeth on the other side, and then we're finishing up the frame. Keep watching. <laughs> Well, all right, folks, hindsight is 2020, they say, and I really <laughs> wish I would have thought about that sooner. I'm not sure how I missed it, but uh, big, big difference when you're trying to put these two pieces together. If you use another block and give it a whack, it's a lot easier than just beating on the flat face of the Connect 4 on its own. So save you some time right there. I think I don't need it again, but here we are. So we've got it all together. It is robust, I will say. It's not going anywhere. I'm not sure how easy this part's gonna be now that I have this all wedged together and my bent plywood is, you know, doing its thing, but these A-frames are the next part to go on. So with any amount of luck, I'll be able to slot them in there. And where's my pretty side? There we go, and slot it in there, slide it all together. I have a feeling I'm gonna need that motivator and probably a block again. How easily can we see this? So we have one, two, three, four holes. We have one, two, three, four tabs that are gonna slide in. I say that optimistically, but I don't know how good I feel about it. This plywood, oh, come on. There's no way that just happened. Champion of the world. <laughs> Take the small victories, folks. So, give it a little motivation just to finish it off. And I lost a tooth or two. Uh-oh, I guess those were some of the loose teeth. Well, the good news is, Clearly some of them were not that hard to put on. So if you lose some teeth, find a spot and put them on back. Realistically, there's a lot of stuff connecting this together. 
it's not falling apart anytime soon, so I wouldn't be too worried if a couple fly off. There we go. This side, however, this is my half pipe. I do not feel as confident about this one, and we'll see if I can go two for two. Two for two with a little motivation, perhaps? Come on now. Oh yeah, like a glove, folks. Look at that. Do I even need the motivator? A little bit of motivation, just a little. Little bit of motivation, and we have ourselves a almost functioning Connect 4 table. That's pretty sweet. Where'd we go? There we are. <laughs> Last two, three pieces. Sorry about the camera. We have one of those guys. We have two of these guys, and I just dropped a bucket of pucks. These are pretty self explanatory. We are just going to get those slots lined up. My plywood has a slight split in it, causing me a delay in looking like I'm awesome. There we go. One. Two. Pretty good. Not even a lot of motivation needed. Here we go. And I'm gonna go three. I'm gonna get those lined up as nicely as I can. One. Two, look at that. This one might need, oh no, no motivation needed whatsoever. I'm not gonna lie, I'm thrilled about how quick that went together. And last but not least, another half pipe. The slot guy, so that when you're done dropping all your Connect 4 pucks in there, you can open this up, bloop, and they fall out. This should be fairly, oh come on. Look at that. Whoop, a little too much. That, my friends, that's a victory. Ta-da! Puck slot, everything drops down. So, there you have it. I think I'm gonna call the kids in, I'm gonna do some trash talk, and we're gonna see who the champion of Giant Connect 4 is. Keep watching. Jim. Jim. Finish her!
I am so glad that camera ran out of battery right after those first three games. The kids gave me an absolute shellacking, but there's no video evidence of it. Giant Connect 4. Easy to make, fun to play, and you can probably sell them too. We really hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions or comments, as always, drop them down below. We'll be sure to have a look. The next project, I believe, has something to do with Cedar, so make sure you're subscribed, ding, to uh, stay up to date with all the latest and greatest. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you around the CNC.